Hey, what's going on, everyone? I want to give you an insight into my current training, my nutrition, my habits I'm following to peak for my photo shoot, which is going to be either the first or second week in June. I'm just finalizing that date right now. It's a photographer. So if you want some insight into how a fitness and nutrition coach eats, how I train, my daily schedule, stay tuned. And for those who don't know who I am, my name is Luke Briggs. I'm the owner of the Total Life Fitness Academy. We specialize in helping parents and busy professionals lose body fat, build muscle, and have more energy. I've been a coach for over 10 years and have worked with nearly 3,000 clients. So I want to go through what the next few weeks will look like for me. So I've done two photo shoots before. I did one in October 2016. And then during that same time, I also did a physique photo shoot. I'm sorry, I did a, a, a bodybuilding show. I competed in the men's physique division. And, you know, basically the difference between bodybuilding and men's physique is in men's physique, you wear board shorts. So, you know, you don't really show your legs. Um, but I did that in October 2016. And then um, I you know, did a powerlifting meet like a few months later. And then I ended up just kind of taking a couple of years off. I just kind of trained to train. And then in June of 2021, I did another photo shoot. And then what I did was I wanted to take some time to, you know, improve my physique for the next photo shoot. So some of you may be wondering, like, why am I doing a photo shoot? So for me, I really love body transformation. It's just something that has always interested me as someone who grew up like without, you know, a very, you know, ripped or you know, muscular physique. Not that I wasn't fit at all. I mean, I played sports, but for someone like me, it was just like something that I always strive to do. And I was able to work on and improve it for myself. And that's why I like helping others with it as well. And the one thing that I really like about body transformation is, you know, my body is, is the one thing in life that I have complete control over. And not that there might not be certain diseases or things like that, but, but in reality, like when, you know, things hit the fan in you know, family life, uh, business, you know, household, whatever, like th nothing ever goes your way, right? Like there are always going to be other things that come up. We can't control over it, control all that stuff. What I really like about this is that I can control what I put in my mouth, what I feed myself. I can control my training, how hard I go in my workouts, and I can do that consistently. And if I just do that, then I am going to have one thing in life for sure that I can control amid all the chaos of everything else that is going on. So that's why for me, I really like body transformation because it's something that I can control and that I can focus on. And then it's really been a catalyst for me in other areas of life. So, you know, for starting a business or switching careers or, you know, getting in a relationship, being a parent, like I, I always like the discipline and focus that body transformation have really had for me. And it, I also really like doing it because it's just something that it requires a lot of work and a lot of discipline. And 99.9% .9 of the population is not willing to do the work in order to achieve it. So um, when I achieve it, it just gives me satisfaction in knowing that I'm doing something that most people aren't willing to put in the work to do. And I'm not saying everyone needs to do it. I'm just saying that for me, uh, is what I like to do. And in fact, most people probably listening to this podcast do not want to do a photo shoot. I'm just simply sharing my journey with you. So right now I'm training four days per week, uh, strength training, and then I'm getting 10,000 steps per day. I have a coach who just bumped me up from 8,000 steps per day to 10,000 steps per day. And I actually just pushed the date up a bit for my photo shoot because we have some other things that we really want to do in the summer. And for those who don't know, like training for a photo shoot or any sort of physique competition is very selfish. Um, you don't eat out, you know, when we go places, like can't really travel, can't really go on vacation because I need to hit certain macros. Uh, macros being, macronutrients being the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So it's, it's really something that, um, you know, if you have a family, it's important to have kind of that, that finite timetable on it because, you know, we do want to do other things this summer. So that's why I pushed it up a little bit. So I might not be like as lean as I was in the last couple of photo shoots and I'm okay with that. So my last two years, so 
I did my first photo shoot, as I mentioned, in October 2016. Then I did my last one in June of 2021. And now I'm going to do one here in June of 2023. And last time I ended up weighing 157 pounds at my photo shoot, but I had started the cut at about 178 pounds. And I was already somewhat lean at that point. And then I just cut the last layer of fat off. And what happens is a lot of times, like when you cut down for a photo shoot, you look great in the photos and everything. Um, obviously, I appreciate all the photographer uh, did in terms of making sure that, you know, I looked my best, but you know, in reality, I was actually pretty skinny. Like if someone were to just see me walking around, I would probably look fairly skinny. So this time when I cut for a photo shoot, I wanted to be bigger and more muscular. And I wanted to be like at least 170 pounds. I figured, you know, if in two years I could put on 13 pounds of, you know, actual muscle, that would be a really good achievement, especially for someone like me who has been uh, training consistently for years. And there are always things I can definitely do to improve, but, you know, putting on muscle mass is not easy. Um, it is definitely a, a challenging process and you need to gain uh, body fat in the process as well. So then I went from 157 pounds in June of 2021 to, it was either in uh, October, I want to say September, or October of this last year in 2022, I got up to 207 pounds. So I put on 50 pounds. And no, this was not all muscle. There was some body fat in there as well. And it was interesting because, you know, being a fitness coach, I was at a, a seminar with other fitness professionals in, uh, I want to say it was April uh, at an event that I was in, uh, in Nashville. And I remember like when I saw people several months later, they're all, you know, or uh, I mean, even like um, when I saw them recently, they, they were saying, oh, Luke, you're looking leaner. And they said, you know, last time you were kind of looking a little chunky. And it was honestly because it was intentional, right? Like I was probably wearing like a tighter shirt and my belly was poking out a little bit uh, because I did have a little bit more body fat than I usually had. I had, you know, like a 36, 36 and a half inch waist, you know, and when I think I did my last photo shoot, it was like 28 and five eighths inches. It was like, I was like a child, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it was very lean. So I had definitely put on some body fat. So it was a little bit different. This time my waist won't be down to 28 or 29 inches just because I'm bigger as well. But um, that's where I was last time. So then I wanted to put on more muscle mass and then I uh, talked to my coach and we ended up starting the cut. I want to say it was in October. And then I'm going to keep cutting until, uh, until June. So I want to go through like what my training looks like right now, what my nutrition looks like right now. So right now, my training, I'm doing four days per week, uh, the same as I was last time I, I talked about this. Um, so you, know, you may be wondering, well, why are you only doing four days? Don't bodybuilders do like five or six days? And the reason why I'm doing four days is just because that's what I want to do with my schedule. I could possibly train like five or six days per week. Um, but just like with a family and with business and everything else, like my fitness isn't like my number one priority in life right now. Like it's something that I enjoy and want to do well at, but you know, I have other things that I want to optimize more right now. So I'm okay. If I sacrifice a little bit of progress in my fitness in order to do better in other areas of life. So that's just something that, you know, it works for me in my lifestyle. Like maybe if I were, you know, 26, 27 years old, um, you know, pre kids, I could do, you know, pre-business, you know, pre-other things like you know, it would work okay. And I, I was training five, six days per week. It's just for me right now. Like I don't want to spend that amount of time or do that amount of training volume uh, in order to get a little bit better results. And I think there are also diminishing returns. Like I think a lot of people think you need to train like seven days per week. Um, and, you know, I've talked to bodybuilders as well who are like, you know, I, I get better results with five days per week than I did with seven days per week because I'm recovering better. So there are definitely a number of variables to factor in. But anyways, so I do four days per week. Uh, Mondays, I do chest and back. Tuesdays, I do legs. Wednesdays, I go for a 30-minute walk. Thursdays, I do arms and shoulder, arms and shoulders. And then Fridays, I do chest and back again. So I do chest and back twice per week. Maybe in an ideal world, I would do arms and shoulders twice per week or legs twice per week. But again, I'm okay with that for right now. I'm going to start also adding in more ab training as well. I didn't really train my abs last time, the last couple of times, uh, just because I mainly got lean with the diet and with the nutrition. 
So what I'm going to do this time is I'm, I might not be as lean this time, but I'm going to work on getting my abs to show in a little bit more definition uh, in this, in the six pack area this time. So that's what my training split is right now. And then I also aim to get 10,000 steps in per day. Uh, not that I don't aim to get it. I will get it because I'm committed to it. I wanted to reframe my talking there. I, I almost caught myself there saying something that I didn't want to say. <laughs> so I just bumped up from 8,000 to 10,000 steps. So to be completely transparent until a few weeks ago, even I didn't really ever track my steps. I just got a, a Fitbit Versa really like it. It's a smart watch. And I remember the first day that I tracked my steps, I just wanted to like do like a normal day. What I do, you know, I honestly sit a lot during the day, you know, I'm on a lot of calls working on my computer. So I don't move a lot during the day because I'm not an in-person personal trainer anymore. I do online coaching. So because my job is more sedentary, I got to the end of the day, we had just put the kids to bed and it was 7 30 PM. And I was at 3,800 steps. 7 30 p.m and i was only at 3800 steps and i was like holy cow i do not move do i <laughs> so i just started like walking around the house a little bit and i think i ended up getting up to like 6,000 steps or close to it that first day and it really made me realize that i do need to be more active in general that's just something that i i want to do it is be more active it's just healthy for for a number of reasons so now i'm up to 10,000 steps per day so what i did to get that even today is, you know, I realized that in order to get that many steps, I need to be more committed about getting more steps in earlier in the day. So, you know, for those who know my routine, I've shared it on a previous podcast. Um, I get up, then I go for a 10 minute walk. So like this morning, after I went for my 10 minute walk, I was probably at, you know, 1300 calorie, I'm sorry, 1300 steps. Then uh, I do, I do my 90 minutes of deep work and for the first 60 minutes, that's where I work on my business and even like scripting out my podcast and stuff like that for all of you. Then I spent the last 30 minutes of my deep work going for another walk. So then by the time after I worked out and it was like 9 a.m., I was already at like 6,500 steps for the day. And I don't know what I'm at right now. I can probably check my watch. I'm at 7,700 right now. Um, and it's like, you know, early to mid afternoon when I'm recording this. So I can definitely get that in for the rest of the day. Uh, because I don't want to be getting to the end of the day and I'm at 3,800 steps and it's 7.30 PM. And all of a sudden I have to get 6,200 steps and just go for like a, <laughs> go for like a three mile walk at night uh, or four mile walk. You know, I want to uh, have that done so I can spend time with family or my wife or, or whoever later in the day. So I make sure that I'm making sure that I'm getting it done earlier in the day. My nutrition right now, my macronutrients are 235 grams of protein. 200 grams of carbs and 70 grams of fat. So that is 2,370 calories, 2,370 calories. Uh, we just cut recently. Uh, my coach cut my calories. And the reason why, again, I have a coach is because I like the accountability piece and I like someone to remove the guesswork for me. So I don't have to do it myself. Uh, and it, it's always helpful just to have someone else in your corner as well. And you can always learn new things. So every 10 days, I do a refeed day of 235 grams of protein, 320 grams of carbs, and 80 grams of fat. So don't try to follow these numbers. I know you're like, oh, that's the magic number. This is just what works for me and what my metabolism has adapted to. If you do this, there's a 99% chance it won't work for you because you are not me. You are a different person. You have different hormones, different metabolism, different age, maybe a different gender, different genetics, like you're at a different starting point. Your training age is different. Like there's so many different variables that go into it, which is why, what I always tell people, like when they come inside our program, like you can't just follow like a generic amount. Like you have to be constantly like modifying it based on your body's response. So, you know, yes, as I, as I cut, I think a lot of people think like, I'm going to be like starving myself, but I'm eating 2,370 calories a day. And, you know, I think my last couple of cuts, I was between, you know, 2000 or 2200 calories by the end of my cut, like by my photo shoot. So I think people think like you need to be starving yourself. And if you do it incorrectly, you may very well need to be starving yourself. But if you do it correctly, where, and by correctly, I mean, you have like an off season, quote unquote, before you have a season, as in you focus on doing like a reverse diet first, where I raise my calories up before cutting my calories, which I did in my muscle gain phase. 
then I'm not starting already from a low amount trying to cut and then end up, you know, damaging my metabolism and not really making any progress. So it's a, that's why I have like a long-term mindset with this. So sure, I'm a little bit hungrier. I'm even noticing, you know, a little bit hungrier right now, but, you know, still very manageable. And one thing that a perspective that I love to have on the whole hunger thing is that like, I'm choosing to do this. Like at any point, if I wanted to go into my refrigerator and grab food, I could. I am very fortunate to live in a first world country where I live in a house. I have the resources to be able to get food and have what I want. Like there are so many people out there in other countries who are, or, or you know, even in our country who are poor and can't even get these things. So, you know, it's, it's a perspective that I just like to have that I am choosing to do this. So I'm not going to complain about it because it's something that I am intentionally doing. So there are always going to be trade-offs with different things. So I'm not too concerned about the hunger and I'm feeling fine right now. I'm just going to drink water, eat more veggies, eat good solid protein. So a lot of people always have questions about like, you know, what do I do when I go over to someone else's house? When I go over to someone else's house, I bring my own food. And then oftentimes a lot of people, you know, when I go over to their house, they'll ask like, oh, well, I have like, you know, protein and veggies, like this is healthy. Can't you, can't you have it? Can't you eat it? And then I always respectfully say, I appreciate it. Um, but no, I already have my own food because people oftentimes think that just because the food is healthy, that it's going to help. And I'm not saying like eating healthy food isn't important, but portions are the most important thing for body transformation. So like your calories and your macronutrients. So like if I just go over to someone else's house and they, ha I haven't measured out the meat or, ha or the fish or the carbs or the veggies, and they're just laying out there and I have no idea what the weight is or what, you know, what the calories are for those, then, you know, it's not going to help me. So I already have my foods measured out and portioned out for the day. It's the same thing, like, you know, eating out at a restaurant, you know, oftentimes we see on the menus, it's like, oh, but you know, at Burger King, it says this is, you know, 400 calories and, you know, 40 grams of protein, X number of carbs and X number of fat. I mean, think about it. Like, sure, that might be approximate, but you have some like 14 year old kid who, you know, is just doing this as like a summer job, who's been doing a million different, uh, you know, a million different uh, orders that day, just kind of randomly throwing, you know, fries and burgers or whatever, you know, putting your order together and probably not being weighing it out or measuring it to a T, right? <laughs> so it could be very different than what it actually is. And I know a lot of people will say, well, I thought food labels were off anyways. And in reality, food labels could be off by, you know, as much as 20% or you know, who knows, sometimes even more. But in reality, like the reason why when I'm in prep mode, I eat pretty similar things every day is just so it's consistent. So the variable is always consistent because if food labels are off by a little bit, I'd rather just eat about the same thing every day so that I am consistently taking in the same things uh, so that I'm going to optimize my, my results. Because how I eat in prep mode is going to be a little bit different than how I might eat other times of the year. So what will the next few weeks look like? So leading up to the photo shoot, you know, I'll do things like a spray tan, you know, shave chest hair, shave body hair, things like that. Um, baby oil on skin, you know, during the actual shoot to make, you know, make myself look shiny or whatever for the photos. Um, but it's, it's just interesting because uh, as, as I'm cutting weight, because when you lose body fat for the photo shoot, you'll also lose a little bit of muscle. And even this morning, like when I was working out, I was looking at myself in the mirror and, you know, I almost felt a little skinny at 185 pounds and I'm not immune to comparison as well. Like, you know, there was like someone else training next to me. And I'm like, man, that guy looks bigger than I do. And it's just, it's hard to not compare ourselves to others. Um, but in reality, like it's important to run our own race. And another kind of another thing along the same timetable or just along the same topic is I was having this conversation with some clients actually before, and it was actually a few people who were, who were talking about this and have talked about this recently is, you know, they're kind of saying once they're nearing their goal weight, they almost feel like they're not satisfied and they still need to go further. Now, this is, in my opinion, the dichotomy of driven goal oriented people. 
we're constantly striving for achievement while balancing that achievement with satisfaction. This is something that still to this day, I struggle with in different areas of my life. You know, this is it. It's just like, I feel like I should be, you know, so many people feel like this, like, this is it. Like, you know, this is it. Like I should be so much farther along right now. So uh, a successful businessman and podcaster who I follow, um, Ed Milet, you know, very successful in his life. He calls this concept blissful dissatisfaction, blissful dissatisfaction. Because when you are an achiever, you always want to achieve. So you want to be happy when you've achieved something. And then at the same time, you also don't want to stay satisfied because if you just stay satisfied, then you're never going to work to achieve more. And then eventually you could become unhappy or dissatisfied because you're no longer achieving anything. So the only way I've found to work on this is to look backward. Where was I at this point last year or five years ago? Am I farther along than I was five years ago? Yeah, absolutely. Am I farther along than I was one year ago? Yes, I am. And some of you listening to this might be like, well, a year ago, I was in better shape. So if you're comparing yourself right now, like maybe are you in a better spot than you were one month ago? or two months ago. Compare yourself to where you were either a year, a month, five years ago. Don't compare yourself to other people. So this is why some of the most successful people I know aren't always happy because they base their self-worth off of their achievements, their appearance, or their weight, or their financial status, or net worth, or their relationship status, or whatever it is. You know, I won't be happy until I'm at 130 pounds. I won't be happy until I make this much money. But in reality, like if we tie our self-worth to a number, if we don't achieve that number, do all of a sudden we just not like ourselves? Why do we attach our self-worth to numbers? Again, it's something that I've struggled with as well and something that I'm always working to improve. So I think while it's important as a goal-oriented person to not always be satisfied, just from a happiness standpoint, I think it's important to recognize how far we've come in different areas of our lives. And it's not like you ever solve this. You're like you never solve this problem. You always just manage it. So another topic that I was just talking about with clients the other day, I was doing a PowerPoint presentation for some of our clients on posture. And I was talking about how to improve posture. And one of the things that, that I said in the presentation was that you never fix posture. You don't, you know, we see all these things about, you know, 21 days and then you'll fix your posture or, you know, 21 days and this, 22 days that, 30 days this. And it can be helpful because it can get us going. But in reality, like it's something that we always need to work on. And I love this concept from Simon Sinek who wrote The Infinite Game. Uh, he also wrote, uh, Start With Why, which is a very popular book as well. But he wrote Infinite Game, Simon Sinek. And he wrote this as a business book, but it applies to other areas of our lives as well. A lot of times we strive to like win at physique transformation or win at health. And in reality, like you never win at something. Like you don't just win at parenting. You don't just win at marriage, right? Like you could be, you could treat your spouse very well for 10 years then all of a sudden, one year, you just start treating your spouse poorly or not attending to your spouse's needs. And then all of a sudden, your marriage could crumble. Parents know this as well. Like every time you think you got it figured out with parenting, all of a sudden, your kids will throw a curveball at you and then you'll have to figure something else out new. So it's just something that you're always working on. You're always playing the game of improving at parenting. Same thing with health. Like I remember I used to think like all of a sudden, I'll just arrive at my dream body and then I'll never need to do anything ever again, or I can just take the foot off the gas pedal. So I've learned that the goal is once you get to a place where you're feeling good, the goal is to keep it there or even improve. So James Clear talks about this in his book, Atomic Habits. And if you haven't read the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, it is literally my most recommended book of all time. It's one of like the most popular books over the last few years. The goal isn't to achieve the goal. 
The goal is to become the type of person who would achieve the goal. The goal isn't to achieve the goal. The goal is to become the type of person who would achieve the goal. So the goal isn't to run a marathon. The goal is to become a runner. The goal isn't to lose weight. The goal is to become a healthy eater. If you just eat healthier or you eat better portions, you're going to lose weight as a byproduct of that. I see this all the time where people will have vacations coming up. That's like, they're like two months away and that just for, they'll just like crush themselves for those two months to get in shape. And then as soon as the vacation's over, they'll just go back to normal. And then they gain all the weight back or they lose their shape. And it's scary because in order to sustain these results, you need to become a different person with different habits. And a lot of times, like we're very comfortable with who we are because we're gonna, we might have to start hanging out with different friends. We might have to start going to bed earlier. We might have to start getting up lit earlier. So it's scary. But in reality, like there's no going back to normal, like your old normal. You need to develop a new normal and a higher version of yourself. So those are just some thoughts I have and an update on my journey. And I hope it's helpful. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out and look at the links in the show notes. We will chat soon.